lot of Americans were shed in a great civil war. And when it was over, the nation had been preserved and the institution of slavery was gone forever. But the prejudice and injustice it left in its wake would test every generation of Americans down to our own. Still, the dream endured. As the frontiers of America pushed on to the Pacific Ocean and beyond, as waves of immigrants swelled our population, new voices would rise to insist again and again that we the people must mean all the people. Freedom is a land without boundaries. The work of America will never be done. Each new generation will be asked to discover the part it must play. And each new generation will leave unfinished tasks for the generations that follow. As long as the dream endures. to safeguard our rights and our ideas, to imagine the future and to embrace its challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, the Presidents of the United States. George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, William Henry Harrison, John Tyler, James K. Polk, Zachary Taylor, Miller Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, James Buchanan, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, James A. Garfield, Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland, Benjamin Harrison, William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, William H. Taft, Woodrow Wilson, Warren G. Hardy, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard M. Nixon, Gerald R. Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, Bill Clinton, and the current President of the United States, George W. Bush. My fellow Americans, when we look back on the history of this country, we see a record of almost unbelievable energy, sacrifice, hard work, of impossible dreams that our ancestors dreamed and made real. We see injustice, too, 
It weighs on our hearts even today. But for every injustice, there has always been a voice crying out to right it. And America has always listened to those voices. We are listening today. And perhaps it falls to us, to this first generation of the 21st century Americans, to say once and for all that no child, no race, no creed, no ethnic community will ever again be left out of the American dream. Through education, through the opportunity to work, and to enjoy the fruits of that work, we can open every closed door, expand the horizons of all Americans. Again and again, we return to the same simple principles, freedom, equality, the freedom to create, to prosper, to dream, equality before the law, in the workplace, in the chance for a better life. And each time, in the process, America grows stronger. The beacon of democracy grows brighter. The world looks in new astonishment at what free people can do. We the people are just getting started. If the experience of these extraordinary men adds up to any one thing, it is this. To be true to the American dream, one must have the wisdom to remember and the courage to change. In honoring these men, protectors of our heritage, servants of our dream, guides to the future we face together, we honor the enduring meaning of America. We, we the people, Hear in their voices the voice of our own hearts. President Abraham Lincoln. My fellow countrymen, I have often inquired of myself what great principle or idea it was that kept this confederacy so long together. It was that all should have an equal chance, that all are created equal. This is the sentiment embodied in the Declaration of Independence. Most governments have been based on the denial of rights. Ours began by affirming our rights. Let us turn this government into the channel in which the framers of the Constitution originally placed it. If we cannot give freedom to every creature, let us do nothing that will impose upon another creature. True democracy makes no inquiry about the color of the skin or place of birth or any other circumstance or condition. We propose to give all a chance. We expect the weak to grow stronger, the ignorant wiser, and all better and happier together. Let it be as nearly reached as we can. For the struggle of today is not altogether for today. It is for the vast future also. So may our children and our children's children for a thousand generations, rejoice under those glorious institutions bequeathed us by Washington, and continue to enjoy the benefits conferred upon us by a united country.